Hello and welcome to the Cowboy for Game Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast, Oceanics Special. I'm your host, Jake. Today, I'm joined by Ben from Nolan TCG. Hello. And Andrew from... Not from Nolan TCG. Correct. No. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, we are in a different setting. Uh, we are here in Brisbane for the 2023 Oceanics uh, tournament. Live from Oceanics. Yes, live from Oceanics. The uh, semi-finals or finals is happening right now. Just about finals. to start. Yep. Final is just about to start. So yeah, we will bring you updates as they come. Um, who's in the finals? Uh, Poe and someone else from Poe's locals. Yes, uh, the, yes. the XO. Uh, yes, it is very much the Strike One locals. Uh, it, it is uh, Pearly versus... Cash? Cash? Cash. Yep. Okay, Cash. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Jake, um, you could yes. have prepared a, a top 32 cut, but he has not. Couldn't run, couldn't run, uh, couldn't Jake has my... prepared a top 32 cut. <laughs> you stupid and Here bitch. he is. <laughs> so, Live, bring us the top 32 cut. So, the top 32, as described by the fantastic Yaoi Wang, uh, Zhang, I should say, uh, <laughs> always on top of this stuff, really good at that. Uh, so, we have seven cash, five lab, uh, five uh, live twin sprite, I'm assuming. LTS? Yes. Live Tune Sprite? Yes. Uh, four Pearly, uh, three for Hire Sprite, uh, three Rika, three, two Dragon Link, two Branded, yep. and one Mana Dean. Interesting. I saw a lot of uh, Melfi Sprite running around. Mm. And I mean Melfi Sprite. Um, You're 100% sure on that? I'm 100% sure I mean Melfi Sprite this time. But okay. Yeah, I saw a lot of that running around this weekend, and I'm surprised that didn't see a lot of prevalence in Top Cut because that was just Ibli Lock. It's just Ibli Lock Turbo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess. I think everybody's maining like dark yeah. holes and stuff now to try and play around that and yeah. like extra deck outs and all that kind of stuff. If, if you main the out, it's just it's just going to happen. I wonder how the wind's going to pick up on these microphones. Well, We're I'm trying a new setup. Shielded, hopefully. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, that hopefully, it's not picking up all of that noise. Um, but yeah, um, so how was our Oceanics? Uh, let's start with Andrew. Well, <laughs> as I am notably not in the top card. Um, no, look, it went a bit average. I had a lot of fun. Um, I played Dino, great fun. Uh, There's a few regrets I had about the deck after the fact. And I was not super surprised. I kind of knew in my head, I was like, well, I haven't put in the grind. I haven't put in the work. Uh, the results were probably never really going to be there, but we still did alright. I think I finished 4-5 because we just played out the rounds. Um, I think at my peak was like round 3, I was like X1 and then it went downhill from there. Uh, but we had a great fun. I versed a whole heap of different decks. I think almost 7 different decks um, throughout the whole day. Uh, which is probably the main takeaway I'd take away from the Socianics, even though things got a little bit more convoluted in the top cut. Um, by and large, massive variety. You just did not know what you were going to verse next. Um, even though there was probably two or three of the best decks, there was just a lot of close competitors, and yeah, everything was a bit different. But that all right, got a little bit interesting towards the end, but you know, it's okay, that's how it goes. Yeah. It so, any particular like highlight moments from your matches, like anything that struck you as particularly funny or like- Jake's asking this because he wants to be yes, able to <laughs> absolutely. I have what a no setup. guilt about this whatsoever. Um, I also ask this question every time, so fuck you. At, at this point, I'd like to point out, we sit down before the tourney starts and we're all sitting at like this certain table. It's table 106, 107. That's 107. Where we've set yep. up at this point. And pairings come up. Jake opens his phone. He's like, Andrew J. <laughs> table 107, I think it was, yeah. 107, the one we're sitting at right now. Oh. Um, so Andrew's cool. literally here. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, Andrew, please don't tell me you're at table 107. <laughs> so there was another Andrew J. There was, yes. Um, but this was, in fact, myself. And me and Jacob played this matchup, and I traditionally do quite well in it. <laughs> yeah, that uh, was not the case. Lo and behold, yes. <laughs> here we go from here. Um, as far as notable matchups are uh, concerned in mind, I think oh, I wouldn't even call it an a insane uh, interaction. This is a very nice person I versed who was playing Pirelli, you know, I think it was about round six. Um, and, you know, they kind of put everything into the stack multiple times, and I just happened to open the flame card in both games. <laughs> Um, and they kind of just turned into no games. It was it was flame card G plus like decent follow up and uh, yeah, that was that that happened. That was probably the only thing that I thought was like, oh wow, I'm getting very lucky here. Uh, Both of our decks could search fire kaiju, and that came up a lot. <laughs> yeah, fire kaiju good. It's a bit big, but you know, at least Dino put out big boy. You put out big boy, you can get over it anyway, so we're good. Jake, what's going on with your recording? I don't know. Did you pause your recording? I didn't touch the phone. Ah, oh, Jake. Maybe it's still on my microphone, who knows? Yeah. We'll see what we picked up. 
I also I'm, wasn't talking a lot in that bit, so it should be fine. Okay, that's okay. Everything should be fine. Anyway, I'm just gonna have to resync your audio. We'll figure this out. These are the growing pains, and I've got to. Do we do another clap? It out. <laughs> nah, it's fine. Maybe, maybe do another clap sync. It's a power clap. They had to both do it at the same time just to mess with me, didn't they? <laughs> I'll figure it out. Okay, we continue. Um, my week in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, well, Oceanics. In yeah, my Oceanics yeah. experience. My Oceanics experience was really good for a little bit, <laughs> for, for a while. So, I started round one, and what did I play round one? Um, what did I play round one? Did I lose story. round one? Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know. So I know you would have, yeah, because of the, the deal that we made. Yes. Oh, yeah. So I well, I lost round one. Yeah. So I definitely lost round one. I played against uh, I played against Ibli Lock. Uh, so I got Ibli Locked, and mm-hmm. I didn't play the out. So <laughs> and that deck like has three ways to keep you Ibli Locked, and I was like, oh, well, I have two ways to out this. What happened no, several hours before that, or the day before uh, then? Well, I lent Andrew my lingerie bow. <laughs> so Andrew had the art to Ibli Lock, and I was like, ah, it's fine. I'm <laughs> just I, here to have fun. And on that note, I did not get Ibli Locked all day. I got Ibli Locked constantly. It, was, it wasn't frustrating, but I was like, ah, it's fine. Like, it's nice I could have played the out, right I didn't now. play the out, oh well. Um, then I won like my next couple of rounds, and things were going really well. I was like, maybe playing fire rescue ace was actually pretty cool um i think eventually though once i finally lost my next loss mm-hmm. downhill it was like yeah. five, five i think it was like That's four straight losses yeah and it was like felt pretty brutal from there um then we picked up another win towards the end of the day so i ended up like x whatever i had like four wins i think four five yeah so same as me i think yeah yeah four, five. so it was fine. My losses were to Cash, Cash, Ibli Lock, Ibli Lock, and uh, one other random ass deck that I should have beat. Anyway, I beat, I won my lab matchup, and that was the funnest thing about my day, was my deck sucks against lab, and I beat lab, so yeah, it's well, fine. Well, that's how I felt when I was versing fucking Andrew's dinos. I was like, well, if I win against this, maybe I can win against everything. <laughs> that was not the case. No. Um, I'm not finished yet. Yeah, that's okay. But then my dice got stolen and that ruined my weekend. So, yeah. Fun times. Fun times. Love when stuff gets stolen. Yep. Um, so, yeah, my weekend. Uh, so, obviously, coming in with Dogmaticar, was not expecting to do well. It was just some fun. Um, I tend to treat a lot of Oceanics that I go to as, like, a fun thing because I know that I can't get to uh, Worlds even if I wanted to. So, it's like, eh. It's all expensive pay, Jake. I know, it's not the expense that is the trouble for me. It's the time. I can't get the time. Nah, just get the time. It's fine. Nah, just don't. Just get the time. Anyway. Just be sick for that week. So I'm sick every week. I'm sick right now. My <laughs> stomach feels disgusting. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. one first game against Andrew. Uh, I think after that I had like one or two losses um, and then had a few more wins. So I ended up dropping, I think, in round eight uh, on my fourth loss. So, like, I was just clinging on, I guess you could say, at that point. Mm. But even then, like, even the best uh, X3s were still in, like, 36th, 37th position at the end of the tourney. So, that's like, I was never getting up there, especially when, like, towards the end, in, like, the 5th and 6th and 7th round, if I was winning, they would just drop. So, it's like, oh, okay, so any resistance I have is out the window. Um... Yeah, like the deck performed fine. Ideally, I would have had another one or two Maximus in there when I was doing it, just because Maximus does tend to be the crux of the build that I'm doing at the moment to be able to duality and do the funny Dragoon thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, it just wasn't sort of working. And most of the time I'd side out um, Thingo uh, in sort of the um, sort of second and third uh, games, I'd side out the dualities because like, the gimmick sort of up by that point mm. but also I only resolved it once the entire tournament it is going to take me so long to, to for that card because every time you say it, I'm like how do you play pot of duality in your deck I was like you special all the time and then yes it's it's taking a long time I've got like 20 years of pot of duality to push out of my brain to think of duality as anything but no pot just duality yeah it's the sober duality yeah we'll have to say duality and pot of duality pot of duality in it. Do you want a pot of duality? Do you want a pot of duality? 
with your bottle of water. Yeah. Um, the Should funniest interaction I had over the weekend. Uh, I'm looking very forward to telling this story. Why no, you're it? still running. You're still running. Okay. Maybe that's what happened before. Yeah. Okay. So everything's fine. Because the time's pretty much the same as well. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so yeah, my funny story. Uh, so I was versing a punk cash tier player, I think in round five or six. Um, I went first, did the whole extra deck Sandy thing. Like there was weird ash in his extra deck to like, there was like an instant fusion target. There was like a tuner. I was like, oh, okay. So it's some sort of synchro cash build. Cool. Mm. Um, so he just goes, okay, uh, my turn, special Fenry, attempt to go to battle phase. I was like, okay, well, I don't want you banishing my boss monster, so I'm going to flirtily negate it. And he's like, okay, cool. Uh, do some things, do some things. Uh, triple tactics, take your Albazoa. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, look, 4k attack, I get it. Um, summon some more things, summon the big um, punk dragon, bounce stuff back to my hand, summon Baron. And then just before the, he went to the battle phase, uh, he goes, activate the effect of Albazoa. And I was like, okay, so I'm sending five cards from my extra deck. Uh, yep, uh, enters chain link one, enters chain link two, uh, gold dragon, Mahong, chain link three, uh, arc light chain link four, and some other thing, chain link five, to chain block all the other effects. So, like, <laughs> blows up and bounces his entire board, and then at the end of the turn, I'm still getting my Albazole back. And he's like, I didn't need to do any of that. <laughs> no, <laughs> Completely no, wasted. Yep. It was, oh, fuck, it was funny. And then... The match before that, I was versing a Dragon Link player, and like he was in time and like trying his hardest to get the Skylight, um, and got to the Skylight and attempted to use the effect, and I went punishment on the monster. The Dragon Link was my other loss. Yes. Yes. Because um, so I got Skylighted for time. Yes. 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 One must always have a win condition <sighs> in time. Um, but yeah, uh, so he goes to use Skylight, and he's got like the Link monster on the board, like the um, what's it called? I can't remember what it's called. Which Striker Dragon? Uh, Striker Dragon. Yeah. So attempting to blow up Striker Dragon to just go for the cheap game. I have Punishment. So I go Punishment target the Striker Dragon. <laughs> and in order to try and uh, resolve the effect, he goes <laughs> Book of Moon <laughs> target Striker no. Dragon. I was like, sorry, what? Sorry. <laughs> Not, da, how da, da, da. <laughs> Not how that works. Um, he ended up getting time. Um, I really don't like him. Hope you're watching. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, look, most of most of the people I versed with super chill, like the punk Cyframe, whatever, um, Castura dude, he was pretty chill. Um, yeah, most other people I was versing were fine. So yeah, overall Ooh. it was a pretty decent event. Um, venues, okay, needed probably another bathroom. Um, well, like the, but that didn't affect That's us not too our much. problem. Like, yeah. I mean, it's our problem We today. stayed here. We had uh, amazing. I haven't been to that bathroom yet. Yeah, we got, so like the venue is at a hotel and we just stayed at the hotel. So whenever we needed to go upstairs, we went upstairs. Yeah, that was so great. Between the rounds, go back, kick back, watch some TV. One interaction I did have, I wouldn't even know if this is funny or interesting, but like I, against um, Labyrinth, I'd have an interesting, in, uh, in a simplified game state, I dark hold, I believe they had like two Labyrinth, two of the big Labyrinth monsters. Mm. And I had set the, one of the traps from the monster from, to the back row. Yep. And I read it quick, uh, closely, because um, it says you, uh, you can set it, you can activate that turn, but only if you control a fiend. Yeah, okay. And they didn't have it, because, um, and then, yeah, someone over after I had nothing else to push except that to kind of push me through. They tried to flip that, and then we read the card closely, we are like, oh, can't activate that. So I proceeded to win. Um, I'm fairly sure that I would have had that interaction then in my lab matchup. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was an interesting one, because it, it was a, because it was a lose-lose for him there at that point, because if... I think if you flipped it and summoned something off it, um, you know, it's just gonna die with the dark hole as it resolves. Yep. But then as soon as the dark hole resolves, couldn't activate it. Like, I was like, oh, cool. I've set up a checkmate here that I didn't even know I was playing chess. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. here we are. <laughs> sure. Uh, that was my round two and then one round three and then it proceeded to go Much like very downhill off, after that. Off the cliff we go after <laughs> that round. I lost the Flunderies oh. as well, which was like um, bittersweet. So I was like, oh no, but it's the best deck. <laughs> Even though it clearly, uh, I don't think it's already showing in top 32 here, sadly. But there was a very low representation. I think it was like 11 Flunder yeah. players. In Euros at the moment as well, it's got like a, it's chartable. It's on yeah. the chart. Deck's still Euros. good. I think, I think if I objectively wanted to do the best of this tournament out of the decks I have, I, I probably should have stuck with Flunder and just played that again. Yeah. Um, but I didn't want to, so I didn't. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and again, it's all a matter of like 
what you're aiming to do. Like you can just aim to top. I was very much here not for Oceanics. It was my birthday weekend, so I just had a lot of fun. Um, speaking of which, um, thank you to uh, Jesse and the crew for my birthday present. I was meant to bring it down. Actually, it's just over there in my bag, but I can't be bothered getting up out of my chair. Um, they got me a uh, Ulti Dingisu for my birthday. Ding dong. Uh, so yeah, very happy about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> on um, Yeah, super happy about that. So thank you very much. Um, oh, we also got our little pre-registration token things. Oh, yeah, we got coins. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're doing the tokens again this year. A bunch of them, like um, gauze and all that kind of thing. Uh, ben really wanted Gizno, um, as he said on the podcast, I believe. Um, he got Gizno by trading for it, which is yes. cheating. I, tra oh, um, I, I traded my Mobius for a Gizno. Oh, silver Gizno or? Gold? Silver Gizno. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I got the gold Gizno. I got silver Diddy Crow. So I was all right. It looks that. nice, yeah, the Diddy Crow. Cool. I would have yeah. been happy to get the Diddy Crow. I was like, yeah, but a, but a relevant card. I was like, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, we're, yes. we're going to talk Euros first? or uh, Yeah, we can chat Euros. Um, Euros so. currently live. Yes. Uh, not live if you're watching this because. Yeah, by the time yeah. you're watching this, it's very much not it's live. It's very much over. Time moves forward. <laughs> yes, time progresses, and I'm not uploading this fast enough. So, uh, the total breakdown for also, day Also, when one. we said we're reporting live from the Oceanics, which is true. Again, will not be true. <laughs> yeah, by the time you watch this, very yeah, much not Oceanics. live. Yes. Uh, so, we have a breakdown from day one. Uh, so, these are in percentages because I'm sure the numbers would be bonkers. I actually don't know how many they had there. I don't know. Either. Uh, 1,872. Okay. It's probably more than that, but I'll go with it. Uh, so, uh, we have Cash Tira at 19%. Uh, Runic at 14 um, I'm assuming that's all the variants that people like to do. Yep. Probably Fur Hire. Fur Hire seems to be one of the more popular ones at the moment because its uh, resource uh, control is kind of bonkers. That's no, fine. You just negate the, the Forgo or the Link 3. Yes. And then you win. Easy. Yes, yes, yes. It's not that easy, but it's easy. Yeah. It's easy if you just open the right Scroll cards. the app, bro. Yeah, exactly. Uh, then we have Bestial Dragons or Dragon Link, I imagine. Yes. Uh, Sprite, Labyrinth. And Branded, all at 7%. Uh, Vanquish Soul at 5%. Uh, Rika and Flunderies at 4% on the charts. Burb Gang. And 25% Other. Other! Woo! Woo! <laughs> I, w I, was, I was also the only Rescue Ace player here this weekend. Yes, you were. I'm Look, I imagine it's probably because no one cares, but I was probably the was only <laughs> Dogmatic Ritual player. Yeah, probably. Too. But people cared. Simultaneously, the worst, best, and moderate <laughs> of the field. Yeah. Just double checking. Oh, for, for what it is, I feel like you got a pretty decent result. Like, it is what it is. Not decks, not all decks are uh, made equal, and at the moment, Press they're not. Is about they're to be made equal. They're about to be made equal, yeah. Ben's just ahead of the curve. Just He's getting just out ahead ready. of time. I'm just out here testing my combos. I'm on the biggest stage. Ben's ready for the next meta. How long have we got till that comes out here? Uh, three weeks. I was going to say. Was it that close? Three weeks away. Damn. All yeah. Right. Snurking up quick. Oh, that means Manadine gets this new support and Unchained. Oh, I can go back to Unchained. <laughs> oh, I'm so keen. Uh, so, um, oh, sorry, side note. Is that the set we also get the secondary Dino support with the fusion yes. monster and all One that? of them, yes. We get the Xyz. Do we get the yes. Do we get the Pteranodon thing that searches Polly? No, that no. one's in a side set. Yeah. Sad. So it's like Rex Raptor support. Grimace oh, someone. it's in that fire set, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, is it the fire set? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, because that's Volcanics, Battling Boxes, and um, Settlement Great. Yeah. I don't think it's got anything else. And they're not fires. Ah, something. It'll be somewhere. Okay, okay. Well, I look forward to that. Cards will be available I, at some then point. Then I can play the... Yeah. Uh, I think it's quite play. Yeah. 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 It's fine. No good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I guess moving on to some other news. Um, we have uh, the next uh, evolution of Gaia, the Fierce Knight. Uh, he's getting a new card. Uh, so I'm going to read what he does first, and then I'll tell you the rest. Uh, so when the opponent's monster the activates, can tell him what he does. I'm telling everybody on. everything. IRL rescue ice going through. So when your opponent activates a monster effect <laughs> in the hand or graveyard, uh, discard a monster, negate the activation if you do destroy that monster. Yep. Uh, when this attacking card destroys an opponent's monster by battles, target a fire monster in your graveyard and special summon it. So it's all sounding pretty okay for a guy monster. Well, you just said Gaia Monster, so... I said for a Gaia Monster, yes. It puts it into context. Like, yep. the rest of the Gaia cards are down here. This is probably up here, right? Sure. Yep. Uh, so it's a fusion. That's fine. Of a Synchro Monster. 
That's less fun. Yeah, so it needs Gaia Blaze and a face-up monster you control. Is Gaia Blaze a synchro? Gaia Blaze yes. is the synchro that they put into the starter decks. Hmm. Into those, like, learn-to-play decks. This is just to yeah. promote that new two-player learn-to-play deck that they're going to keep that in as the synchro of. I think Gaia, Quite like, possibly. anything to do with Gaia, they just immediately make terrible, right? Yes. It's, yeah, like, it's literally always been, the, like, really subpar the, support. The like, only relevant Gaia thing I can think of in the history of this game is the rank 7 that you just slapped on top of rank 6s and 5s. I think it's yeah, polymerization because it's polymerization to then make it into support. Zeus. Yeah. Was that the first ever card used in the show? Was Gaia the Dragon Champion? So therefore, polymerization is... Guy support? Uh, what, first fusion monster? Yeah. Mm, I'm not sure. We'll have to I think it look is. that up on our next Yu Gi Oh! trivia day. Um, but yeah, not particularly good. So that's coming out in Age of Overlord, so look forward to not seeing that ever. <laughs> um, more importantly, we do have some news on the upcoming uh, rarity collection here for the EU and Australia mm. region, and I suppose America. Yeah, we got um, screwed. You remember when yep. we said it was really good? Yeah, it became less good. Oh, we have an announcement. Oh, that was quick. Yep. So. Ba -ba 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 -ba. The winner of Oceanics. I don't actually know his name. I need to look back to the... It's um, not Poe. It's not Poe? Well, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, it's not Poe. Kunlun The other guy. Kunlun Lee. Yes. Um, which is kind of crazy, because I... Well, yeah, Kunlun. he's done really well. Congratulations. Cash <laughs> won. So, he did excellent. That means he went... Undefeated completely the entire, undefended the yeah, entire 14 -0. amazing yes. that's actually amazing imagine Dino doing it last year and not getting to go to Worlds yeah <laughs> yeah that is an outstanding <laughs> effort that is a total of 14 matches in a row completely undefeated that is kind of bonkers that eh? is incredible well done uh, but back to worse news um, so yeah um, basically the price difference between US and EU boxes is double we are paying double for EU prints than what we would if we were in the US for the rarity collection. It's actually outrageous. Yes. What are we paying? So we're paying double. So are you we're paying like $2,600? Is this after you convert? Yeah, yeah. That's is this after conversion and everything? Even if you buy the box in America, pay tax and shipping, it's still cheaper. Significantly cheaper. Wow. Yep. Yeah. I was looking it up earlier. Me and is that what uh, we're doing, boys? Were, like searching it. Uh, you can get them from Gamers Choice shipped to Australia for like four, uh, 1400 just to touch over yeah. yep. after discount codes. So that's still 1200 off buying a case here. Yep. Yeah. Well, it sounds like that's the go. We're just going to play US Prince. Yep. 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 Rarities and uh, terrible looking cards be damned. I'm not paying $2,600 for so a box of cards. We're getting a literal Euro tax. Like. Yes. It's actually insane. Yep. It's so dumb. I can't. As far as I'm aware, they haven't given any like genuine reason as to reason for it. They, like, they just didn't list a recommended retail price when they put them up on the website. What are your and reasons? Then left it to the money. vendors to tell us. <laughs> they like money. <laughs> no, no, it's expensive to print in Belgium. Apparently, but only for this set, right? Only for this set. Yes. <laughs> Only for like, to be fair, there are set. there are new rarity printings that they have not done before, which would in theory require new equipment. I still don't buy that it costs this much more to do it, but no. couldn't possibly. Um, yeah, I don't get it. Like, but you you would be able to say the same thing about the US versions, right? Like, yes. actually, the other interesting so, thing that I um, took note of the other day is that um, they're starting to do uh, English print OCG cards because now it's such a prominent language it, in a lot of um, OCG. That's always been a thing. I know, but now they're doing it in like main sets. Yeah. Like they're doing it a lot more now because it's a more common language. What does that, what does that mean? Does that mean they do like, they you have a chance to pull it in English and not in English or are they doing they different do language sets? They do print sets. So the same yeah. way we do French, German, so on. Right, but are they selling them in like Japan and places like that? Yes. yes. So they're going to do like side by side, like uh, the backing, his power the of the elements in English, his power of the elements in Japanese. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah, okay, the backing cool. will still be a Japanese backing. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's been a thing they've always done. It's just not always been a thing that's widespread. Okay. And it ended up with a weird thing where, like, in Singapore, you'd be stuck playing a Japanese, Chinese, or Korean copy. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. It'll make it. Like, it, it, the fact that it's just going to become more prevalent and easier to access will make it better for a lot of OCG players, but. Yeah. Well, good. the reason I brought that specific thing up is it does raise an interesting question of whether the Oceanics region can start getting stuff printed 
in, in Japanese. Yo, well, yeah, like start taking their English cards. Yep. But I suppose we wouldn't be able to use them currently. But like, yeah, it just poses an interesting question for future whether they do decide to do that and it just reduces their costs of having to ship it across the world. Okay. Yeah, mm. just just something to think about. More interesting than economic else. hours. Yeah. Um, so I guess at this point I move on to questions. Um, was there not any new other news this week? I had to look through. Like, there's really not a lot. Like, there's um, speed door promos. It's like, oh, yeah. it's Kurt from Locals. It is Kurt from Locals. Hello, Kurt from Locals. Kurt from Locals is going to walk Please in front of the camera. In front of the camera. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, God. I don't. <laughs> Night time. Night time. Uh, Night time. <laughs> uh, so, uh, if you weren't aware, we do have a Discord link. will be in the description below. Feel free to jump in, say hi, and ask us questions. Uh, first question today comes to us from Tuesday's Noob. Uh, as someone listening from the UK, Harpy was on TV around the same time as other trashy oh! TV shows, which leads me to ask, Neighbours or Home and Away? Uh, over here, we watch Home and Away. No one watches Channel 10 in Australia, by the way. It's just there as a drug front. I feel like... It's like every UGG store you've ever I feel ever like seen. most of us yes. grew up on Home and Away, and I feel like most of our parents grew up on Neighbours. I could be wrong yeah. about this, feel free to disagree, Jake, but like, I, I My know... My parents grew up on neither. We didn't watch Channel 7 or 10. We only watched 9. Only people significantly older than me seem to have watched Neighbours, and like, for reference, I'm 30, right? So like, I swear it was only people that were like, maybe 10 years older than myself were like, oh no, I loved Neighbours growing up. Yeah. Uh, no, I can't say I ever saw that. I used to watch a bit of Home and Away with uh, Mum and Dad because they just love that shit. Um, and yeah, Alf Stewart's a legend. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, I we didn't watch that a lot of this. Carried across the sea. <laughs> well, yeah, the internet probably helped a lot with that. Right. <laughs> the other Alf Stewart. Let's points. not yeah. get them on a test yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want Andrew getting cancelled. Oh, no. Uh, next question comes to us from 6 r 6 uh, assuming no, no, no contempt no. what? Next question comes to us from Jesse. Does it Jesse's come to us from Jesse? Is he giving us a live question? Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jesse. Men's camera's right in front there. of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have a question. Real camera house. Come around, come around, come around, come around. Alright. Considering we all terribly scrubbed out of this weekend, uh, if we were to do it again, what deck would we play? Would we change it and why? Ooh. I would uh I would play Flew Under Ease because it's the best deck. You did say this. Clearly. Um, sure I would... Uh, hmm, what would I play? Probably the... No. <laughs> Not at all. I don't know how other people were performing well with Branded. I don't know how... I don't know how. Um, I would probably just do the same with more Maximus, honestly. Yeah. Like, I, I wasn't here to top. I was here to drink. Maybe, maybe another way the to... The card game was just a distraction in the meantime. Maybe another way to answer this question would be... Let's, let's be honest. There's, there's a pretty clear, roughly top four decks mm -hmm. or so. If you had to do your absolute best, what, do you, what deck do you feel like you would have could have played best? I would have just played Cash. Yeah. Cash is yeah. super like, brain dead. I wouldn't have... I would have stopped... I wouldn't have stopped playing Cash. If I knew what the ban list was going to do to it and it was still going to be somewhat playable, I just would have kept playing it. I think out of all those ones, I would play Dragon Link, because I always liked the Chaos Space stuff, like mainly from my Thunder Dragon days. Um, but like it kind of kept that tune to it a little bit type of thing. I really like the Dragon Link stuff. I think it's... Uh, it probably is objectively worse than the others, but yeah. I really did like the, um, the resource management and, and everything it could do. But in saying that, I don't think it has a good cash mashup. It's Vanishy Boys hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Relatively prevalent from what I saw this weekend. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. You yeah. may or may not have caught that. <laughs> um, lots of shifter this weekend. Very shifty. Yeah. Shifty bowling. Yeah, I got shifted a lot. And, like, it doesn't really hurt that much when you're playing Rescue Ace. Oh. For some reason, like, three of the five times I got shifted, I was like, I have exclusively opened the Monster Reborn spells. I, <laughs> I, I like, this sucks. I was telling Jake this earlier, actually. My one time I got shifted over the weekend, I didn't get shifted much. When I did, uh, which was against Flunder, of course, not Cash. Because I didn't burst Cash all weekend somehow, which is beyond ridiculous. Um, I completely regret I took uh, Baguska out of my extra deck as a last-minute choice. And it was actually the worst thing, because under that I can just go over after, send Giant Rex, it's banished, summon that, make Baguska by myself two turns. Uh, proceeded to not be able to do that, and proceeded to, uh, to, to lose. Yep. 
Yes. That happened. Big so, catch. If only you. you'd kept your... Um, Go in your winner, Matt. <laughs> Baguska. Good luck. And you'd let him keep his lingeribo. Yeah. Everyone would have been happy. Yeah. But here we are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mad regretty. Ah, it's okay. If anything, I would have played Link Disciple. Because I make yeah. access code. So I just go Link Disciple and then like during combo make access code, bring back the Link Disciple, give me an extra To be honest, like Lingaribo, Lingaribo has the cool effect, but honestly it was the first Link one that I found in the database that said like that I could use like make Ebly with. It is the better one because you okay. get the trap protection. Yeah, it's kind of cool, I guess. Yep. Not bad. Good source. Yeah. <laughs> um, or maybe I should just play Lingaribo to protect from the double cross. That too. Yeah. Just should have done that. Too. Uh, so, next question comes to us from 6 r 6 Assuming no contaminants get into it, how long will you allow a glass of water to be left out on the bench before you won't drink it anymore? Oh, like two hours? Uh, uh, yeah, I'd probably leave it... It depends, right, on the context. Like, if I've... Yeah, you're going to um, dust his fuck house. Yeah, hell no. But... Well, yeah, it's assuming that, like, not a heap of, like, shit has got in it. Yeah. Yeah, like... At work, it's probably the longest I ever leave a glass. Like, if I get a glass of water, I intend to drink it within half an hour. Yeah. If I forget about it, I'll just refill it. I think if I was desperate, like, maybe overnight. And that would have to be a pretty mm. clean, yeah. like, area for me to be comfortable with that. And that would be, like, and that would be weighed against it being incredibly annoying or difficult to get a fresh source of water. Yeah. And again, the context is everything, right? Fuck, I would drink a three-day-old glass if I was, like, in the middle of the desert and two days out of water, right? I'm going to pick it, right? But... What if you had sand in it, though? Uh, yeah, I'd probably still do it. None of, no, no part of that situation is ever going to be comfortable, Just right? Just make but, your lips purse enough to not let the sand through. I, I think you'd have no filling your lips by then, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway. so... Pre-soak your lips. <laughs> <laughs> With what? The water. Put, the you water, put your finger yeah. in the water? You, uh, yeah. I guess, yep. Bad grills over here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so last night I had a glass sitting beside my bed, and this morning, having still been slightly drunk slash hungover, um, I drank that shit straight away. Mm. I went to do the same and went, huh. It's empty. <laughs> I just left it in the bathroom and empty. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and our final question, which we've kind of already talked about, um, is again from 6i6. Uh, do you think the pre-order price for the 25th century collection... Uh, premium, whatever, will prevent the majority of people opening packs, or is that just yes. a problem for the pause? No, that's that'll prevent people from opening packs. Like this, it's, is... go, it's going to hurt everything, right? Like it's going to hurt the secondary market for it. It's going to hurt yes. the primary market. I, like... I, so I don't think it's going to hit the secondary market that hard. I think it's going to be a case of just no one's going to open it. Yeah. Did like, you have an alternative just open the US I, print? I guess. US yeah, print. yeah, you're right. I guess it depends on how people go about it. Because if they do buy it, then they're going to have to charge more to cover their costs. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it doesn't make sense to do it. Uh, and yeah, and if they don't, then there's just going to be a whole unsealed pack, pack, uh, package. Like people know, um, I think the community is pretty widespread that people will spend money on dumb shit. Yes, but at the same time, they're generally pretty savvy. And if there is an alternative way to do it, more cost effective, like people are yeah. going to do it. And like, they're not going to put up with it. Realistically, the people who are going to, let's go, say the people who are going to purchase this, this set or can purchase this set are the players that have a bit more money laying around to disposably spend on Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yeah. Those players already have max rarity of most of these cards and like you know unless you're chasing after something like Plat, like Starlight Ash Blossom you're not going to necessarily chase a lot of this stuff and you're just going to buy the singles. Yeah. Yeah 100%. Like I'm kind of keen yeah. on those new ulti Nibiru's because um, I've still got the OG secrets which are still beautiful. Um, and there's an OTS pack Nibiru. That you yeah that's get. what I mean like but if, yeah. depending on how cost effective it is like yes. OTS Nibiru's are I haven't checked the market in quite some time. Like Last I knew, two hundred a pop. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Whereas if this is quite, uh, you know, pumping out quite a few of them, I, I don't know. I suppose with the US print ones, maybe we might there might be as little as fifty, sixty each kind of thing. I don't know, but yeah. Here, here is we'll the rest of locals. Hello. What it is? How do you guys? Everybody's all do this here. Weekend? Please have a walk in front of the camera. <laughs> 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 We're running We're the theme have of to the get podcast. Like a little sign. Just does it anyway. We're well, Yu-Gi-Oh players. We don't read our cards and we don't look for our cameras. Saying recording. Something don't, don't walk in, in front and around of the, the camera. camera. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's our last question for today. Is Wait, there anything else we're going to discuss? Anyone else want to give a feedback food? on how their weekend went? Or is going to Absolute shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was alright. Wasn't it? Can I, no, come over. An individual. No, I don't have too much to say. I was going to say, like, I could have done better, but I'm not just. We are the Wollongong gang, however, we uh, are. I disliked my Blackwing Dragon League. Should have went full sort of. Bad decision. <laughs> yes. 
bad decisions. Also, main ash. Yeah, we, we did the, cover this. That's, we did that's the best very out of important. Everyone. Yeah, and that's something I wouldn't mind having a quick Luke? discussion on yeah, when you, our thoughts are about ash in the main <laughs> versus a a meta full of triple tactics, thrust, and sorry, uh, and talents. And I was I, that's why I ended up not doing it, and I regret it because. It seemed like TTT wasn't there half the time, and Ash would have saved me a lot of trouble in a lot of cases. But I was also like, if it's a low impact, and then I get talented or thrusted, like I don't know. I, I made the decision that that was worse, but maybe that's not true. I don't I, know. I feel like in certain instances, Ash can just be so powerful in the current meta, um, yeah. like being able to stop a pearly search, being able to stop a branded fusion, being able to stop a Castiorithiosis. Like there's a heap of stuff that it actually prevents. Um, like you're right, people are going to like main the thrusts and the talents and all that kind of stuff. But it's like one of those things. Like if they're if no one's running hand traps, then they're not maining those cards. So people go back. It's like you're just sort of chopping and changing between yeah. those two things. So you I, just sort of need to roll. I the guess dice. it was a calculated risk, perhaps that I that I should have taken more. So my biggest fear uh, in that is that you ash on what seems like a very important uh, interaction. They push through it anyway. They talents, they rip my best card, and I'm down to three uh, left in hand. And then not only am I down to four cards to push through a board, um, they, also they also have, have perfect knowledge. knowledge of three, all three of the four, right? Um, and I'm like, that's a nightmare scenario. Um, but I guess maybe it should just be treated as if they have it, they have it. Um, just, and it's worth... Just play the ash. Yeah, and I guess that's it. Is it, is it going to be it's helpful or harmful more often than, than not? And I suppose... Ideally, it's more helpful. Yeah. It's too good to not play. You just play the Ash. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, it's getting busy and I'm hungry. So uh, that will conclude us for today. Thank you all very much for listening and watching. Um, yeah. And let us know uh, in the thing. The things. Actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't really know what question I'm wanting them to ask, but ask us some questions for Go next down week. to the Discord. Yeah. yeah. Link will be in question. the description. Ask us some questions for next week. And we is Rescue Ace best deck? Rescue Ace is best deck. Not yet. <laughs> but we're going to hear about it every day until it is. <laughs> anyway, we'll catch in. you all next week. Peace. Bye. Bye. Three weeks.